Last week we, we learned that the genuine believers, the Christians, has the capacity. We learned that the Christians, the Christian has the capacity to discern. To discern, to know the truth from the fake. To discern, to know the godly from the demonic. That we have the capacity. So we, we have no excuse. If, if we're claiming to be followers of Christ, we have the capacity to discern. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we learned last week. And so this week, in the latter part of chapter 4, because we're in chapter 4. Chapter 4 is a, a beautiful, dynamic chapter. And, and so we're on the latter part of, of, of chapter 4. And the Apostle John now, what he's going to do is he's going to continue with this same theme of being able to discern. That same theme, to identify what is of God and what is not. But instead of continuing to, to teach the believers to discern the truth from the air through the confession of Christ, through the, the person of Christ, John is now going to, to turn his focus on discerning truth from error through the understanding, the understanding of God's love and how his love impacts a true believer in loving one another, in loving each other. So that's what we're going to look at today. That's what John is going to focus on today in here, here in the scripture. Now John began the, the teaching of God's love and and what true, true godly love looks like in the life of the believer. He taught about that actually early on in chapter 3. He taught about that. And now what he's doing is he's coming back. And he's going to return back to this theme, to the subject of love. And now he's going to expand on it. He's going to expand on, on the topic of love, this godly love. As well as expand on the moral test of love that identifies the true believer from the false believer. That's what he's going to do. He's going to once again show us. Remember, John is speaking in black and white terms. It's very clear. He's going to communicate what a true believer looks like, what this godly love and, and how the true believer should be operating in that love versus the fake. The Apostle John here is going to describe for the, for the believers back in his day, he's talking to the believers back in his day, as well as for the believers in our day. He's going to describe perfect love and how the perfect love of God is available to all, to all who call upon the name of the Lord. It's available. And how the genuine love of God is showered upon the genuine believers. Every believer within the family of God. As well as how we as Christians ought to be walking in that love. How we ought to be walking in that love. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Because that identifies us as true believers. Basically showing us what the love of God practically looks like in the life of a genuine believer. And if God's love is not reflected in the actions of a person that's claiming to be a Christian, that person, that person is not a true believer. That's what John is going to be showing us here. So, as we begin to read in 1 John 4, 7, I want to read, I'm going to be reading it slowly. We're going to be reading it for understanding and clarity. It's not something we're just trying to rush through and get through. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to understand what the Word of God says. And so we're going to be starting uh, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. We'll have it up here on the screen for you as well. Now the Word of God says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Now let's stop 
let's stop right here. Because John has spoken a lot in just these, this first verse here. He's, he's given us a lot to, to really break down here. Because we want to understand what he's talking about here. John, in this first verse, he uses three Greek words for love. He says, beloved, which is the, the Greek word, akapetos. Akapetos. Some people will call it, you know, akapitos, akapetos. It's meaning the same thing, which is referring to the Christians, the believers that are deeply cherished ones of God. So whenever you hear someone says, whenever the Bible is, is referring to beloved, it's talking about the, the believers. It's talking about the dear cherished ones. And if you look in Jude chapter 1, William, you don't have this scripture up there, but if you look in Jude chapter 1, it'll talk about the beloved, the, the elect ones, the ones that God has chosen, the beloved. And so this is that, that Greek word love, that akapetos, the beloved. We are the beloved one, the cherished ones of God. He, see, he continues and says, the cherished ones of God. Let us, and then he uses another word. He says, let us love. Let us love. Now the Greek word here is, is the love that we've talked about before, which is that akapao love. You have a lot of people, akapeo, akapao. You have di different pronunciations, but it's the same meaning. This akapao, meaning loving with the will, loving with the head and the heart. Loving with this, remember, prioritizing care and concern that we're loving. We want to love. We, we desire. We're, we're saying, man, I want to love that person. I want to have prioritizing care and concern. That's the type of love he's saying there. He's saying this acapeo love or acapao love, okay? This prioritizing care for one another. John says, let us love, let us akapao one another. Let us have prioritizing care and concern for one another. And then he says this, for, he uses another word, love is from God. Is that the same word? No. The word love here is agape, or agape, which is a benevolent it's a benevolent, all-encompassing love that is of God Almighty. It's the love that God has, this benevolent love. You'll sometimes hear people refer to this love as the unconditional love of God. I don't really like to use the, that word, the unconditional love. I like to use the benevolent love. It's this all-encompassing love that God has. And so right off the bat here, John uses three different types of words for love in the very first verse so we can get clarity so we can understand so we can have clarity in what he's communicating to us here to us believers so this is what john is saying in, in verse 7 this is what john is clearly saying he's saying let's read it again he says acapetos beloved Dearly cherished believers in Christ Jesus, let us love, let us acapeo, let us actively and willfully engage in displaying prioritizing care and concern for our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. For, because, love, agape, this benevolent, all-encompassing love that includes this prioritizing care and concern, it includes that. This love, that love, is of God. It's from God. We have for one another this love. It is from God. And then when he uses God, right here in this, in this verse here, God, he's using the word theos. He's using God Almighty. God Almighty, that's what he's using. And then he continues in verse 7 and says, Everyone, referring to everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, and out of that belief, that faith in Christ, he says, Everyone who loves with that 
agapao type of love, John says, is born of God. This is what John is saying right here. Is born of God. They're saved. That's what he's saying. He's saying they're saved. They're born of God. They're, they're true followers of Christ and truly knows God, meaning that they're believing the truth. They're believing the right thing. They're walking in the truth of the gospel of Christ. That's what he's saying here. And that they're born again, not by the act of their will, but rather by the agape love, the all-encompassing benevolent love and election of the Father. They're saved by grace through faith. And out of that salvational overflow, they have the capacity now to display the akabao love for one another. That's what it's saying here. So, so verse 7 reinforces the foundation of God's love for the believers, as well as the believers responding in belief by abiding in that love. And out of the overflow of the agape love, this all-encompassing benevolent love of God, the believers are now guided and commanded to mimic Him, to mimic God and in the, the power of the Holy Spirit because we're empowered to extend the love in, in the form of akapao, akapao love to other brothers and sisters in Christ. This is specifically talking about how we treat one another, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're not talking about the world. Here in this scripture, it's specifically talking about how do you treat your brothers and sisters in Christ? Mm -hmm. Do you akapao your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you have that prioritizing care and concern for them? That's what it's referring to here. And now in verse 8, John is, is going to make a, a quick contrast. Now God, uh, John is going to contrast again like he does here in 1 John. He says, the one who does not, he says love, he's referring to akapao. The one who does not akapao, love with this prioritizing care and concern, does not know God. Yeah. That's what he said. I'm not saying it, that's what he says. He says, for God is agape, God is love. So he's saying, if you're, if you're claiming you got God, you, you have Christ in you, you have the agape, the all-encompassing love, and now God is commanding you, he's calling you, he's prompting you, he's directing you, he's teaching you to akapao, your brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're not doing that, then you're a liar, Amen. and the truth is not in you, Amen. and you're not saved. That's what he's saying here. John is making it very clear. John is saying here to, to the believers that if a person is claiming to be a follower of Christ, let me say it one more time, and if they're not loving or don't have the desire to love their brothers and sisters in Christ with the will, with the head, with the heart, having a prioritizing care and concern for them, John is simply saying that that person does not really know God in true relationship. In true relationship. Because if they did, they would know that God Almighty is agape, is love. And it would be demonstrated from them, out of the overflow. Then John, in, in verse 9, demonstrates evidence of God's love toward the believer. And he says, by this the love of God was manifested, which was revealed in us, in our case, that God the Father sent his only begotten Son, God the Son, into the world so that we might live through him. Are you... Are you understanding the connection? He's talking about love and he's talking about the connection. 
John is reinforcing the understanding to the believers that God's judgment of sin on the cross of Christ, that judgment of sin on the cross of Christ, the ultimate was the ultimate illustration, the example of his love for us. That when he sent Christ down on the cross, what he did is he sent his only begotten son. And it's very interesting, if you study that word, the only begotten, it's talking about this beautiful love relationship that the Father and the Son had for all eternity. It's this special revelation, this special connection, this, this, this beautiful oneness that he's talking about. And what God did is he provided a way for us to have eternal life with him. Out of the love, this deep, benevolent, beautiful love. This love. And as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He, meaning God, the Father made Him, meaning the only begotten Son of God, Christ Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. And so God loved us so much that he did everything necessary to secure, to secure the way of salvation. That's what John is saying. He loved you so much, he did everything in order that you might be saved. That is unbelievable. Even when we hated him, even when we despised him, even when we were walking away, even when we were dead in our sins, living however we wanted to live, he loved us that much. And in verse 10, John continues and says, in this, meaning in this decision, in this action by God, it demonstrates his benevolent love. And verse 10 says, in this is love. This is agape. In this is agape, love. Not that we acapao God. We, we, didn't, we didn't love God with prioritizing care and concern. We didn't. We were enemies of God. But that he loved. Now listen to this. This word, love, it's acapao. It's acapao. God had prioritizing care and concern for us. That's what it's saying here. God had prioritizing a care and concern for us, but that he loved us and sent his son, Christ Jesus, to be the propitiation, meaning Christ was specifically sent down from heaven by God the Father to be the only means of satisfying the justice and wrath of God against sin. That's what it's saying. It's saying this, very clear. Christ is the only way. That's what it's saying. God loved us so much, there was no other way that you could be saved. There is no other way. But Christ loved, uh, God loved us so much that he sent Christ the only way. And he did it for us. And John is letting the believers know that we have been saved by this great, expansive, benevolent, Agape love that the Father has for us. And as such, he says in verse 11, he says, Beloved, acapetos, the cherished ones of God, the believers. He's saying, believers, the beloved ones, the cherished ones. If God so agapao, if God so loved you with prioritizing care and concern, we also ought to acapao one another. We ought to love each other with prioritizing care and concern. And now John is about to, to make another solid point about how we as Christians must love. And he says in verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. This is what he's saying. If we love, 
He's using that word agapao again. If we love with prioritizing care and concern, we love one another like that. That's the evidence. The evidence that God abides in us. That is awesome. That's the evidence that God abides in us. And his love, his agape, is perfected in us. John is simply letting us know that even though no one has seen God, his agape love is able to be revealed and experienced through the believer's love in action of spreading the good news of Christ, the sacrificial love of God, as it is written in Isaiah 52, 7. This is what it says in Isaiah 52, 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of the happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. And Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. We need to be going out promoting, spreading the good news of the gospel of Christ, because this is beautiful news. This is agape love, God coming down and saying, I love you so much that I have provided the only way of salvation. I have provided the only way that you can be saved. I have provided the only way that you can have an intimate love relationship with me. I provided to you because I love you. And now we need to go and proclaim that to others so they'll know, they'll understand that God loves them. God really, truly loves them with this unbelievable, benevolent, all-encompassing love. And that we, as the believers, we ought to be moving forward in this akapao love, this prioritizing care and concern for others in order that they may see the Lord in us. That's what it's saying here. That's what John is saying. Walking in God's perfected agape love. And out of the overflow, the overflow of this agape love, we're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The believer is carrying out the agapao love for others. Showing that love in action. Love in action. As John communicates that this provides the believers assurance. Assurance that they, that we are in fact abiding in the Lord. This, this love, as we demonstrate this love, this akapao love, it, it provides assurance of our salvation. It encourages us. It should be encouraging you. Knowing that the Lord abides in you. He abides in you. And that you are walking rightly in accordance with his word, his will, and his way. As verse, as verse 13, when we look at verse 13, let's take a look at that. It beautifully communicates this. It's, it says... By this, by this, we know that we abide in him and he in us. So we, we can have assurance. It says, because he has given us what? Of his spirit, the Holy Spirit. We can have assurance. We, we can be encouraged because we're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, abiding in the Lord God. If we're demonstrating that akapao love, that prioritizing care and concern. And then in verse 14, it says, We have seen and testified that God the Father has sent the Son 
Christ Jesus, to be the Savior of the world. Right here, he's promoting and he's talking about the good news of the gospel again. Remember, it all comes back to the good news of the gospel. And John continues in verse 15 and says, Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. John is saying here what, what he stated early, what he stated early on in, in the beginning of chapter 4, in that if someone truly believes, if you truly believe, if you're saying, I truly believe, I'm putting my full trust and assurance in the Lord, I'm, I'm repenting of my sins, I'm coming to the Lord in true repentance, living out this truth, declaring this truth, teaching this truth, that Christ Jesus was from, was God, was with the Father. Jesus Christ was, was God, the Son of God. Jesus was eternally with God, even from the beginning. And that Jesus came down from heaven in the flesh as fully God and fully man to save us from our sins. If you're proclaiming that, what the Word of God says, staying true to what the Word of God says, John is saying that that confession coupled with repentance demonstrates that God abides in you and that you're saved and that you're a true believer and that you can have confidence and you can walk in confidence, in love, in grace, in mercy, trusting God that he's got you even in all the mess of life. And in verse 16, John says, we have come to know and have believed. He used that word believe. We talked about that before. Pistio, that Greek word pistio. Believing, having faith in, putting your full trust and assurance in. John says, if we have come to know and have believed the love, the agape, which God has for us. And then he says this. He continues and says, God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this, love is perfected with, with us. So that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, as the Lord is, so also we are we in this world. John here is, is not, he's not only, he not only reiterates that our confession and repentance through our genuine belief not only overflows into our daily action of akapao, love, but this abiding love also helps the believers in, in their insecurities and doubts. In your insecurities and doubts, in all of us, regarding salvation and the coming judgment of the world. You guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you mess up. Sometimes you're going through stuff and you're like, man, am I really saved? Lord, help me. Uh, what's going on with here? What? <coughs> you start looking at the issues of life and then you start questioning the word of God based upon what you're going through. Instead of believing what God's word says. Instead of believing the love of God. We need to walk in obedience no matter what we're going through. Amen. Walking in his love. Walking under that umbrella of agape. And walking in the acapao to others. And being assured that God has us and he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And we can be assured in our salvation. In our hope in him. And our hope in Him. Amen. And so, as we abide in Christ Jesus, as He abides in us, we can be confident in Christ mm -hmm. in the face of judgment. As His love, as His love builds up our assurance of salvation and expels terror and fright 
of torment and, and punishment. As verse 18 states, 18 says, there is no fear. This word fear here is referring to, it's referring to terror, to fright. It's not reverence fear in context here. It's talking about being terror, frightened, being terrified. Here it says, there is no fear in the agape love of God. But the perfect love of God casts out this terror and fright. Because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We shouldn't be fearing. We should be loving. Our focus, and this is great for us because what it's really telling us is you know how sometimes, sometimes we can get caught up in our negativity. We can get caught up in living life just... You know, being in this pessimistic type attitude. Oh, yeah, you know, life, ugh, ugh, this and that. We could go through that. And this should be encouraging us to say this. As we go through this life, we can be encouraged to, to not be in terror and fear of saying, oh, man, I'm, I'm fearing the judgment. I'm fearing of what's going to happen. Oh, we need to be focused on love. John is saying let us have a focus on akapao. What's our priority? Our priority should be on how, how are we loving in every single situation. Every situation. How am I loving? So when I get into that argument with, with my spouse, how am I loving? When I get into the disagreement with the, the employer, my employer or... The, employ the other employees, my co-workers, or I, I get into, you know, with my, my family members, my children. Get into it with your children, and you're, uh, you want to say all kinds of things. And they want to say all kinds of things to you. But for you, how, how, how does that work out with your akapao, this love, this prioritizing care and concern to minister the gospel? To minister the, the love of Christ. Now, hear what I'm saying. Love is not acceptance of anything and everything. That is not what John is saying here. Amen. John is not saying, oh, you know what? You just love. Love is accepting anything. That is not what it is. <laughs> love is speaking truth. Love is speaking truth. Yeah. God's truth. We need to speak the truth in love. We need to tell the people the truth. We need to love on people. We need to have a prioritizing care and concern for people in every single way, even speaking the truth. Amen. Amen. We need to. We must. We're compelled. That's love. That's love. And we don't need to be afraid. We don't have to have fear. The believer must not be terrified of the coming judgment that will impact every non-believer. Because as verse 9 communicates, we, the believers, we love, we akapao, because he first akapao us. Then John in verse 20 con contrasts the, uh, the action of the believer and the unbeliever again. He begins to contrast this because what he wants to make sure that you understand is everybody that's claiming to be a Christian, just because you make that claim does not necessarily mean it's true. Right. That's what John is communicating here. So he's making a contrast now. So he's been talking to us how, what a true believer looks like in the area of love, that akapa'u love. Now he's going to contrast that with an unbeliever. And he says, if someone says, remember that talk again, right. I love God <laughs> and hates. And he uses this word hate. We talked about this before, this miseo, this miseo, this hate. This hate is this detest, loathe, despise. That's what he's saying. And they hate their brother or sister in Christ. They loathe, they despise them. John says, 
He's a liar. Mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't love God. For the one who does not love his brother, who he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as we saw early on in, in this study, John really is just letting us know once again, he's reinforcing the believers that this, this talk, this talking, just talking, means nothing. nothing. That's what he's doing. He's reinforcing, really what he's saying is he's saying, you can't just talk, talk the talk. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you need to talk the walk. Mm -hmm. He's saying, what's going on inside of you? You need to walk out your love for Christ. You need to walk out that agapao. Mm -hmm. You need to walk it out. Not just say, oh, I love you. Oh, Sister Carmen, I love you so much, but you know what? I don't have any prioritizing care and concern for you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be here for you. I don't even, you know, you got Richard. Uh -oh. Richard can do whatever, whatever you need. No, it's the prioritizing care and concern. That's what he's saying here. We got to, we got to, we got to talk it, but we got to walk it out. Amen. We got to live it. Yes. He's saying live out the love. Amen. Live it out. And he's saying this, live it out out of this overflow of the agape love of Christ. Amen. It's not about works. Amen. It's about loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength. And coming to him in surrender, in repentance, and out of the overflow of him saving you. All right. Then you're going to walk out this agapao. Yeah. You're going to walk it out. You're going to walk it out in and through your intimate love relationship with Christ. Because that's the only way. Yes. And so John, John, he ends this chapter <laughs> in verse 21. He ends with one of the same commandments from the Lord he highlighted in chapter 3. He says, and this commandment we have from him. Now he's going to tell us the commandment we have from the Lord. That the one who loves God, the one who loves God, the one who agapao God, the one who has prioritizing care and concern for the Lord God, the one who has given their life completely to the Lord God in surrender and repentance, that one should agapao his brothers, his brother and sister, his brother also should love the brother and sisters of Christ also. Think about that. Think about what he's saying. This is a commandment. This is a commandment. The one who loves, loves God. The one who proclaims. The one who says, I love God. Oh, I love God. Praise the Lord. I love the Lord God. I come to church all the time. I do all the good. Yeah, I try to do good to everybody. Yes. I speak Christianese all the time to everyone. But are you... Loving yeah. your brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. This is not saying, oh, how do you love your family? How do you love your wife? How do you love your husband? How do you love your brother? How do you love your sister? How do you love your nieces? How do you love your nephews? No, the world does that. If you're proclaiming to love, to love God, then is that out of that overflow, out of that overflow of that love that you have for God that you're claiming, are you loving your brothers and sisters in Christ? 
where we should be. Amen. We should be. And so as I, as I prepare to close, I would like to, to leave, you, leave you all with the words of Christ from John 15, 14. Jesus said this. He said, abide in me. He's talking to the believers. He's saying, abide in me. And I in you. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Cannot. Unless it abides in the vine. And then he says this, which is, we need to really critically think through this. So neither can you. Unless you abide in me. What he's saying is this, you can't, you can't live this relationship out in isolation. You can't live this out on your own. Oh, you know, I'm just going to sit in my house, I'm going to do my own thing. Because, you know, um, I don't need anyone else. I can do this on my own, really. Mm -hmm. He says, abide in me. He's saying, you have to remain in him. That's referring to us remaining in the Word of God, remaining in what God has called us to Himself, how He's called us to, to come together as a body, how He's called us to, to love one another, how He's called us to build up the body of Christ, because you are a part of the body of Christ. You can't do it on your own. So we need to stop thinking we can, if we're thinking that way. And so that's why I wanted to, to just leave you all with this. Because we can't do this, this Christian life. We can't walk this out on our own. We got to love one another. John didn't, didn't communicate all of this love and how we should do this with all the brothers and sisters for you to go off and say, no, I can do it on my own, by myself, in my house, alone, without anybody else. Well, you mean to tell me, how are you going to acapao someone else when it's only you? I'm just trying to make it real, keep it real, keep it simple, keep it real, keep it raw. That's all I'm trying to do. Because that's what we need to do. I'm not up here to, to dance and, and, and do a happy thing for you guys and say some really wonderful words in order that you guys will leave out happy. And then when the world beats you up, you're like, what, what is this? We need to know what the Word of God says. And we need to meditate on it day and night. And we need to know what He's calling us to. And he's calling us to love, to akapao, one another. Beloved, akapetos, beloved, cherished ones of God. May we endeavor to truly grasp the beauty, the amazing, the wondrous, Agape love of God the Father. That he has so graciously and passionately showered on us through the beautiful gift of his Son. Of the only begotten Son of God. May we grasp that. Understand that. Receive that. Yes. Repent. Believe. And proclaim. If you really believe, if you really understand, if you're saying, I know God, I know what He did for me. If you really believe that, and He saved you from your sins. How much are you loving your brothers and sisters in Christ and building them up? And how much are you loving others out in the world, telling them? Do you know that when, when the Bible says, when the Bible communicates the, the two great commandments, right? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what it's saying when it's saying love? You know what kind of love it's saying? It's saying akapao. Yes. Love the Lord your God. 
with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength. It's saying, love him. Have that prioritizing care and concern. Loving him with your head, with your heart, with your will. That's what it's saying. And you know when it says, and love your brother as yourself, love your neighbor, love others, your brothers and sisters, love your neighbors, love even the unbelievers, love everyone. Do you know what it's saying when it says love? It's saying, akababo. Akababo. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what it's saying. So if we really believe that God has saved us, what is the most important? How can you show your love, your akapao, to your neighbor? What is, the, what is the biggest thing that you can do to show that, to demonstrate that love? By sharing what? The agape love of God. The good news of the gospel of Christ. Now that's love. Amen. That's love. Amen. Let us pray.